Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our Greenwich Apple Regional Training Centre session looking at stunning slides with Keynote. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us um, this fine Tuesday um, afternoon, nearly half term, everyone. So a few welcome and introductions. So my name is Tim Lind, and I'm Director of IT at Heronsgate Primary School, and I'm joined by my colleague, uh, hi there, Ralph Korish, um, Year 5 teacher here at Heronsgate, part of the computing team um, with Tim and um, helping him out on all things computing here at Heronsgate. Fantastic. So Heronsgate Primary School, uh, we're an Apple Distinguished School um, um, in South East London, Thamesmead and Woolwich. Um, you can visit our website should you so wish. We are, are the Greenwich Apple Regional Training Centre. So we, as part of, I think there's 70 or so, Apple Regional Training Centres across the UK and Ireland delivering um, courses to build the confidence and skills of educators using Apple technology inside and outside the classroom, um, a community that aims to share best practice and inspire excellence through teaching with Apple technology. So today we are going to have a little look at Keynote, have a think about Apple Teacher, and then we're going to earn our final badge. So if you've been following us this year, this is our 12th course of the year. Fancy that, Ralph. Um, and so if you've been following along, this will be the badge you're missing and you can get that final badge and get yourself Apple teacher status. So uh, this is what your Zoom might look like. So please, if you could keep muted, that would be perfect. Unless of course, we'd like anyone like to unmute and share, that's fine, but apart from that. And there's, if you tap on the more button, you'll be able to open up the chat. We might turn that on at various points. But before we go any further, it's always fun to start with a poll. So we'd just be interested to know, what is your experience in using Keynote? So, go. This helps you sort of popped up on your screen. There we go. Fantastic. Good, nice middle of the ground split, middle of the road split there. Mm, yeah. 53% vote so far, always going up 69, 76. A few outliers. Okay. Just before well, we started, had... I suddenly realised I'd brought some chocolate buttons for the uh, for the um, for the the thing this evening. It just made me smile a lot. At the end of my day, I needed some chocolate. Brilliant. So... That's always what you need. Okay, I'm going to end the poll, then I'm going to share this with everybody. And we have got uh, nine percent. Or like, what is keynote? Well, you'll find out in a second. So... Oh, we lost you there for a second. Um, but no one claims to be a magic move master. Fine, well, maybe after today, you too can uh, call yourself a magic move master. Thank you very much, everyone, for sharing. Next question is, oh, hello. Um, there is, oh yeah, so let me tell you what Keynote is. Sorry, my brain, these slides were slightly differently organized. So Keynote, just a heads up what it is, it's a basically PowerPoint for Apple's version of PowerPoint. So it works on iPad, Mac, and also iCloud.com. If you sign in with your Apple ID, you can do that. Um, it's a great, what's really useful in the classroom is that you can add images, video, text, as well as cinematic animations, as we'll find out later. But it might be good just to get our, our thinking juices flowing. Why could, how could a presentation app be useful in the classroom? If you want to just open up the chat and pop any thoughts you have in there about why, you, why on earth it would be useful to use a PowerPoint equivalent app in the classroom, what would that be useful for? Any thoughts, please do post them in the chat. Um, thank you, Ralph Korish, Contr nice contribution there. Show and share results in science. Do you mean like a science experiment and you? Yep, so uh, you could, for example, use it to, uh, to uh, um, not only help capture what has been going on in the science, but then maybe uh, some kind of, uh, sh when you are showing off the results, um, you could perhaps do a sort of presentation on that to show what you've learned, I was thinking. Fantastic. So anyone else? Oh, thank you, Laura. So children to create their own presentations based on a history topic um, linked to research study. Yep, so it's a great way to um, get children to kind of consolidate and synthesize that research into something to kind of present it to someone else. Take instant photos and share instant feedback of examples of learning. So if you're perhaps using Keynote on your iPad, mirroring it to the screen, the fact you can press the camera within the app and take photos. Yeah, brilliant, thanks Keely. 
Oh, also, again. simply just um, just as a teacher, slide, doing some form of slideshow for the actual lesson, whatever yeah. the subject may be. Um, it can just be a way of, it's, some people I know use PowerPoint, it could just be a, a way of presenting the slides. We certainly use it for some lessons um, and uh, as part of the lesson presentation. Sure, brilliant. Okay, thank you very much everyone for sharing some thoughts. So what is Apple Teacher? So Apple Teacher is a free self-paced professional learning program that offers unlimited access to learning materials and content for using technology in education. So it's basically some free online CPD from Apple. So you visit appleteacher.apple.com. You can sign in there and there's an increasing wealth of resources. They've even got something called Apple Teacher Portfolio, which is new. Just go and look and find out what that is. But the core kind of fundamentals with Apple Teacher is that you can either pick whether you're going to go down the iPad or the Mac route. And then there are um, there's some content there about the core Apple apps, pages, numbers, keynote, garage band, iMovie, and then just the iPad or Mac. And then after you've gone through those resources, you can earn, you can do a quick quiz. And if you get all the questions right, or at least four out of five right, you get a badge. And if you have all six badges, you get to become an Apple teacher. So we're going to explore some of that later on. But first of all, we need to learn about how to make stunning slides with Keynote. So when you first open up your Keynote app on the iPad, you will need to make a new presentation. So when you tap on the plus button, it will make you can then pick a theme. It asks whether you want to do an outline or a presentation. An outline is a way to kind of build your slides without thinking about themes. But for now, you're just going to um, choose that theme and build it that way. If you see any placeholder text anywhere on your slide, double tap on it and then you can enter it. If you don't want the placeholder at all, you can just tap on it and delete it. If you want to change the placeholder images, tap on the little plus in the corner and then choose from your photos on your iPad already. If you want a new slide, tap on the plus at the bottom left. There you can choose from a range of uh, different sort of templates. So perhaps some with an image on or just text or different um, bullets and things like that. Just lots of useful um, options there. And last of all, if you touch and hold the slide, you can then reorder it, kind of drag the order up and down. So that's basically um, Keynote in a nutshell. So if you want to add photos to a slide, um, you tap on the plus at the top and then you can tap on photos or video and then you can choose an image from your library. Once that's in there, you can do all kinds of things to it. So when it's selected, you can drag it around, just tap and drag it around, or you can drag the blue selection handles to resize. So it, rather than just perhaps pinching in and out, you actually have to drag the corners. If you want to crop the image, this is really powerful. If you double tap it, you can then like zoom in and out on the image or decide which part of the image you want to show, really powerful. And if you use two fingers and like rotate on the image like that, you can actually spin it around like that. It's good use of the, uh, the arrows there. I like that, that, was, uh, that, that worked quite well. Um, just, just to be clear, so the, the way that we're doing this is just Tim's gonna, we're gonna um, show a couple of things and then we're gonna demo each time. So. Uh, so don't worry if you're looking at it thinking, oh, hang on, he's going quite quickly. Each time we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll demo uh, after every couple of ideas, we'll go on to Keynote and demo each one. And last of all, you've got the format button. There's lots of ways to change the styling of an image so you can add a nice border, a drop shadow, reflection, all kinds of fun things. So I am currently in Keynote. So I'm gonna just uh, tap presentations here and make a new presentation. So I tap create presentation and as I said, it, says so you want to choose a theme or start with an outline, we're going to choose a theme and then you can look at all these beautiful themes. Here we go, look at them all. So let's choose something um, fun. How about this one? Yeah, that's not super fun, but it's got some funky gradient text on it. You so do that opens it up. Now I've got some images saved on my iPad about the Romans. So I'm just gonna... <laughs> Why would you do? So my slide is going to be about the Romans. So I'm going to double tap to edit my placeholders, the Romans, here we go. Um, a study, here we go, that's what I'm gonna do. A study in antiquity, lovely. And I'm gonna put my name here, Mr. Lins, I can't type. So 
already you can see that's quite straightforward it's just getting changing the placeholders if i tap on the plus down here on the bottom left i can choose all kinds of other things so maybe it might be nice to have um, a couple of photos so i could tap here I don't want jellyfish i want romans so i tap on the plus here i'm going to choose a photo or video from my library look at that i've got a nice picture of the Colosseum. as if by magic as if by magic the wonders of preparation the roman bards a bit close to home in this weather currently as well and last of all let's have a nice picture of probably some kind of roman emperor i'd imagine if we've got a statue made of him look at that lovely and I, maybe i think it might be nice to have one more on top so i'll tap that little plus and i can just keep going maybe a little roman mosaic here we go and then i can drab the blue handles to change that and perhaps i can do a little rotate i might just let this person in one second oh, um, sorry. i'm gonna draw oh hello he says come on there we go there look at that i can rotate it around i could then double tap on it to kind of crop it but actually i'm quite happy with as it stands tap on the format button i could have a little board around the edge i could even do a nice little shadow maybe or a reflection that looks a bit weird let's not do that we have a shadow look at that it's looking beautiful the, um, the the double tapping is very very useful so if tim did just want maybe he just wanted well a picture of one of those people in there it was someone particular he was researching the ability to just double tap and then zoom in on that particular photo is a really really good tool to be able to do or well, for example i wasn't quite happy with the cropping of the Colosseum. i can just double tap and just track it along a little bit just get it perfect just how you want it lovely um let me carry on with the slides and then you can jump in, Ralph, and explain what's going on. Okay. Is it my is it my turn? It's your turn now. All right, what are we are, what are we on, what are we on. I think it's shapes, isn't it? Yeah, not just shapes. Here we go. So, so, so uh Tim was just Tim will just carry on sort of pressing it and then we'll talk about it. So that plus button you see up there is generally used for, I mean, anything you want to be adding, really. Anything you think, do you know what I I'd like to be able to add this almost certainly at some point pressing that plus button we will find what we need to add be it whether shapes drawing um, and videos or anything like that so um, the for, um, for shapes in particular you tap the plus and then you press the shapes one which is the third one in um, highlighted there by the uh, the square and the, sh the circle behind and there's all sorts of different basic shapes um, uh, objects animals um, nature anything there's also the um, the micro um, uh, the, the magnifying glass there, which you can press search for. Um, so if there was something in particular, you thought I can't be bothered to go all the way through all of those. Um, I just want a cat. Then if you type in cat, and the one that we're pointing to there would have popped up, which we'll see in a minute. Um, so you then just tap the shape that you want to add it to your slide. Um, and then in order to think, do you know what? I don't want a white plain cat. I want to slightly decorate it a bit differently, give it some different color. Then we need to format it. So you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can change the color and you can do generally all the things that Tim did to the picture, we can then do to the shape as well. So it formats it to change its style and color. So adding shapes is quite useful, which we'll have a look at in a minute. And then drawing. Um, so actually in the same way, exactly the same again, on the, um, we're gonna tap the add button um, um, and then pick drawing, which is at the bottom. Now, this is particularly handy if you've say got um, um, some form of stylus, be a pencil, be it a Logitech crayon, be it whatever. Um, this, it's, it's, it's an easier easier game to play when you've got those, um, those tools to hand, but it's not impossible just to be using your, um, your, your finger to do the same thing. And then you've got the different options. Um, hang on, there we go. You've got your different options um, in here uh, as to what you can use to um, and to draw with. So pen, pencil, crayon, a filler, an eraser, and then a sort of select tool. Um, and so um, on the right there, we've got the, you've got the five basic standard colors, but then also that sixth one gives you the option to just um, pick any color that you choose from um, a selection. Um, you tap it again for a few more options. So if I tapped on that blue pen now, it would talk about the thickness, um, the opacity of the um, of the of the pen, and um, a couple of other options which we'll look at when I demo it in a second. And then finally, when you are happy with your drawing, simply tap the 
the done button. So we've got two things to model now, I believe. Um, we have got some shapes and we've got some drawings to demo. So as we can see there, uh, Mr. Lings has pulled us out of that so that I can share my screen. Hopefully all working smoothly. And you can see here, um, I am going to, I'm not going to be doing mine on the Romans. I'm going to go on to um, solar system because we didn't communicate that particularly well earlier on. So, but it doesn't matter too much. Um, um, I'm still just going to be modeling the same thing. It's uh, here's one I created earlier job. Um, in this case, I think here's one I created a year earlier, but um, we're going to start with some shapes. Okay. I've got to keep remembering that I'm meant to be looking at my iPad to do this, not at my computer, not on my laptop. Um, and so, um, as you can see from, from here, um, I've got my home, my, my sort of front screen, my title, um, and my name. And then, as I said, we tap on that plus button. Now, as I say, that plus button is, is our go-to button for all things, um, adding basically. And we've got all those different options talking about web video, image gallery, insert photo, camera, audio, all those things. But I will said for now, we wanted to start with shapes. We wanted to start with shapes now. I've got um, a solar system set of slides here. So, and I want just as a start, just to add a few basic shapes to sort of jazz up my front screen. And so I'm not sure where I will find things linked to, uh, to uh, um, the solar system. Maybe it might be science, I'm not sure. Do you know what? I'm not quite, I'm not gonna check. So I can press the search button. I will just quickly show you the basics um, and what we can do. Um, you've got some shapes here, some objects. This stuff is bent, but it's just best to, uh, to explore yourself. But if you're thinking, do you know what? I know what I want. I want the sun. I'm just going to type in sun and it gives you all the options that it think it might want. Now it might think you're going on a summer holiday and you might want your surfboard and uh, your deck chair. But in this case, I think I would like to add a sun onto my set of slides. Now, as you can tell, I currently have a blue sun because that's what matches the settings of these slides. But I don't really want a blue sun because the sun isn't blue. Um, now we could go into this, I suppose, what color is the sun, but I'm just going to keep it fairly standard and I'm going to go with a yellow one. But I thought, you know what, maybe I want to add a little border, add a bit, bit of a border to that because actually it might just impact it a little bit. And you can see here, I chose to have a border and um, if I go to the color, that's a preset, I don't want to go with that, I think I'll go with, I'll make it a nice sort of red border. You can see it sort of lit up around around the red, but I think, do you know what, I'm going to add slightly, I'm going to slightly change the width to that just to make it just a little bit jazzier. All right, fantastic. So I've got sun. And if I just want to add another shape again, I'm going to go back and I'm going to type planet because it's about the solar system. So I wonder what will come up if I press planet. And you can see it's got a few different options there for the earth from different places, but I've also got a Jupiter and a Saturn. So I think, I think, Let's add, let's add Jupiter. And again, because blue is the format of the slides, in this case, it's going to pop up like that. And I want to format it again. Um, let's be honest, I'm, Jupiter isn't as big as the sun, is it? So let's make my sun a bit bigger and let's make Jupiter seem a bit smaller. Um, got to get all those things right. And then looking at that, I want to make Jupiter that sort of slightly, um, slightly sort of, there you go, that's nice. And again, it's not all just one color, so I'm gonna give it a little bit of a border. Go with the color and maybe just, yeah, maybe maybe that, that looks quite nice. And then slightly increase its width. And then almost looks a bit like a hamburger there, doesn't it? Um, but uh, so I've added, I've added the shapes there um, that I wanted um, and I've added Jupiter, I've added Saturn. I could maybe add one of Earth as well. Um, if I just quickly do, one earth there and now let's just see if we format it and i give it green there you go that's lovely south america is a nice green continent fantastic all right so now suddenly just by adding a few of those shapes um, my front cover of the slides are looking a little bit jazzier a little bit more stunning one would say um and so uh next up i was thinking about maybe doing some drawing um well, sort of how how can I um, add uh, this doing drawing? Well, there's a few other, a few things I could do. Maybe I could try and draw the asteroid belt. Um, maybe I could maybe if I move them around because Earth is obviously closer to the Sun than Jupiter. And maybe if I wanted to try and sort of 
and a little asteroid belt um, in the middle. So remember, when we're going to add anything onto Keynote, always go straight to that plus button. Um, and now it's still on my shapes because that was the last thing I wanted. But if we just have a quick look at what the others are, Tim's going to go into more detail on some of these, I think. But we've got tables and we've got graphs. But I want to go to the far right one and I want to go to drawing, which is at the bottom there, just above equations. All right, just above equations. Now drawing and then pops up what we saw before of the different drawing tools. And you can you can play around with these um, as you choose. Um, we've got, as I say, the different options in terms of the pencils, the pens, the crayons, and the fillers, and the rubbers. So I'm just going to pick, I think, let's go with a pencil. Um, and I am going to um, go with just checking the color. And I think that, I think if I'm going to go with some asteroids, they're rock, aren't they? So they're gray. So I think that will do for me. So coming back out, and now the asteroid belt is sort of between between the planets, isn't it? Just to show that off. Fantastic, excellent. I've done my little ash, draw my little asteroid belt. And then do you know what I think all of a sudden, oh that last one I actually didn't quite right. So I've got the rubber at tool out there. And I think that's going a bit too far. So I'm just rubbing those ones out there using the rubber tool. And just to remind you, we said about um, if you then click on click on these and you can click on them individually, but if you click on one dub and then click again, you can see here that it talks about the thick, it shows you what thickness you can have. And um, and then also um, how sort of opaque, how thick, how, how bold it will be. So if, for example, with the crayon, if I was just to quickly um, put this here, then that's nice and thick. But if I was to make it a bit thinner and a little bit less strong in that color, then it's just up whatever works, whatever works in terms of um, uh, what you want really. And then once I'm happy, if I press done, um, then it records it there and it's ready. Now, again, if I want to change the settings on that of the drawing, I can change the opacity so I can um, um, make it bold or less bold. I could arrange it, sending it back to front, or I could flip it as well. So talking about the, um, uh, the settings of it as well, um, being able to format it. So there we go. They are the two, uh, they are drawing and, um, and shapes. Um, and that is how you can sort of add them onto your slides. So I will um, unshare my screen. And then Mr. Lings, I believe we are heading back to you. Thank you very much. And you should be able to see my screen here. Lovely. Okay, so we're now moving on to tables. So what's quite nice about Keynote is it's a way that you can present data. For example, the nine lives of cats. I got a bit carried away here. <laughs> um, so as with everything, you tap on the plus and then you can tap on the table kind of tab and you add a type of table you want. So there's different types. Some have got header rows, header columns. Take your pick. You double tap on a cell to enter contents. You can drag the blue handles to adjust the size of the table. So it doesn't change how many columns or rows there are, but just how much space it takes up on the slide. Um, if you, there was the edge or the far right with the columns and the, at the bottom left with the rows, there's a little double line icon that you can press and drag and that will adjust the number of rows that you have, which is handy, or columns. And if you tap on a number or a letter, you can select a whole row so you can like sort or delete or all the other options that pop up. So that's tables. And then charts, this is really handy. This is a way to kind of display data. So again, you tap on the plus and you choose your type of chart. Um, when you add the chart, you then tap edit data in the popover. That's the technical term for the little black menus that appear at the top. And you can modify the charts data. When that chart data appears, you need to remove the placeholder data, remove any rows or columns you don't want, then put the data you want. And then with the format um, button, you can then change the charts appearance with axes and labels and all that stuff to make it exactly the way you want. So probably the best thing to do is to demo that. So I'm going to go back to my amazing presentation all about the Romans. Here we go. So maybe we're going to have a nice blank slide with some facts about Romans. This is where my knowledge of the Romans might come unstuck slightly. So for example, 
um, Roman emperors. How, uh, how good is your uh, knowledge of the Roman emperors? Um, uh, very poor. So I might be needing you to just, you know. I mean, I mean I'm not going to lie, I've never taught the Romans, so... Uh... Right. We're going to make it up. Maybe we could take some suggestions from the, from the chat. <laughs> yeah, it's probably a few historian experts. Or oh, this is a good chance. To, 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 anyway, so I'm adding my table here. So why don't I just do that a bit better? Well, uh, what I was going to say, while, while you're doing that, Tim, what people who maybe um, are more familiar, say, with uh, pages and numbers might recognise is that actually there, there's a huge correlation between the, the, the three programmes here. Particularly, I've, I've found when you're doing tables and you're doing pre presenting things like that, there are a lot of similarities. So if you can do one on, say, numbers, or you can do it on pages, you can do it on here as well. It works in a very similar way. Okay, so you've got here, if I swipe left and right, I can choose the style of my table. Look at that. Maybe that's a nice one. Well, I think purple, purple was quite Roman. Purple, let's do some nice. Um, and you can see here, you've got, sometimes we've got headers, sometimes we've got um, header columns. Some have even got footers, which isn't handy if there's like a total or something. So it's just, Bearing in mind, I'm going to do something like this. Here we go. Here's my table. I can drag it around, dragging those blue handles to make it the right size. Um, the name of the emperor years voting. Let's just you know decide what we think about the different emperors. So I've tapped on that little line there. I can adjust the number of columns. So perhaps we'll go for Nero. Um, I can't actually remember what year he <laughs> reigned. <laughs> I think it was like it was in the 60s, wasn't it? 60. 1960? Not the 1960s, so it was 64, AD, etc. Um, it was not great here. I wonder if I can if I tap on cell. Oh, here, format. I can do things like uh, there's not a star rating. That's a shame. Oh, yeah, because in numbers you've got a star rating. So yeah, um... that's fine. I'm just gonna uh, use some emoji so it can be, let's just have a nice. You could do a thumbs up, a thumbs in the middle, or a thumbs down. There we go. So I'm going to go for um, thumbs down. He didn't do a great job. There we go. Look at that. So I'm going to add a. I need to pick what kind of. There we go. So you can see how I could, um, for example, to tab tabulate all my vast knowledge of the Roman Empire into my slide here. Yep. So that's kind of giving you a flavour, but that's a really good. It's really. Because you've got those controls, you can present that data in a nice way. And then if I wanted to make a chart, so here we go. Um, and tap on the plus here, and I'm going to choose what type of chart. Why don't I do a nice chart about? Um, you didn't think this through when you thought I right 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 to make up some data on the top of my head. Why don't we go for a? a um, a pie chart. chart for how long they were around. There we go. That's that's not a very great bit of data, is it? Oh, let's try this again. Sorry, we're going to go for a donut chart. There we go. Everyone loves cool. a donut chart. End of the day, who doesn't love a donut? Um, so if we tap on it again, we can edit the data. So here we've got um, the months. It really looks like it could be something to do with the Romans, couldn't it? We're just going to leave that there. But you could, for example, change the uh, contents of those cells, give this slide a title. If you tap on the format button here, uh, you can change your colors. That's quite nice. Add a title to the slide, to the chart in the middle there, lovely. Um, change that radius. So basically, whatever data you're trying to show, you've got lots of options. And if you decide, you know what, I wanted it to be um, not 2D, but let's have a 3D that you can have. And change the top, and you can even change what, how 3D it is. Look at that, beautiful. So there's lots of options there to make beautiful charts. Yeah. So if you, I mean, I, I, if you're doing another kind of subject, like um, you're collecting data for um, for things in science or for there's some geography, and then you want to get the children to create the uh, slides um, and present the data in those slides and present it to the class, then um, then the the graph tools and the table tools will be very very handy for that um for the quality of roman emperors i'm not certain if uh, if there's always a uh, always a way that pie charts can help no. but, uh,
but uh, but no, it is a very very useful way of children are presenting their their learning to the class because obviously with numbers you can you can go more in detail in numbers with the with the tables and with the charts, but the correlation with with um, keynote as well of maybe creating some slides and presenting data and presenting your learning as well then um, then uh, keynote. Um, can, can do both those things together. Um, you can't go quite into as much depth with the tables and the charts, but certainly I would suggest for, for what you are doing in school, um, certainly what we do in primary school, without doubt, but I, I would imagine that there isn't a lot that numbers couldn't do that you would need to in school um, in terms of the slides and the tables. Um, right, so animation. Animation and, and magic move we're about to look at. So this sort of trying to jazz up your slides a little bit and make the presentation um, sort of more fun, really, I suppose, and uh, a bit more engaging. Um, this is something that my kids particularly enjoy. I think they enjoy it more than the actual uh, creating of the size, to be honest. They, they, um, they're more keen to try and add transitions and add magic moves than they are to the learning sometimes, but there we go. It still shows that they are engaged in their learning in some form. So for a transition, so between slides, basically, or um, also within the slide at the same time, you tap on the slide on, uh, that you want, and then you tap transition, and then add transition. At the bottom of the screen, you can see there are all different options for transitioning, okay? You try it, swipe through them, and then just um, see which one you want, and you can tap on it to preview it, to sh and it will show you what it is going to do. Um, then you tap object, add build into animation, um, and so it will then do exactly what you want it to do. Um, and again, like as before, when we were looking at the um, looking at the drawing, once you've finished with your transition, um, you simply press done. Um, you might want to do um, a few slides at the same time, which is fine. You don't have to press done at that point. You can just go through the slides. And when you're finished doing all your animation, um, you can press that play button to preview um, what you've done. And if you're happy with it, then again, you just press done when you've finished. Okay, uh, magic move, which is kind of like a type of transition, really. It's like going um, um, going into the transition. Um, one of the options on the previous thing, which we'll have a look at, um, is called magic move. Now, um, when we type on the slide again, we'll tap transition and then tap add transition, which you'll notice is exactly the same thing as we've just done before. Um, and then, but this time at the bottom, one of the options is magic move. OK, and so we click on that, we click on that um, and you choose magic move and press done. And then what it will ask you to do is it will say, do you want to duplicate the slide? Because what magic move does is it duplicates the slide, but then you move the images around. Um, and so the duplicated slide, you're then in charge of moving it around so that it basically transitions that maybe you want to highlight a particular bit on a previous slide. And, um, and highlight it or move it to one side and you can sort of move things around and create quite a seamless transition between, between the different slides and it sort of animates it quite smoothly for you. So it's quite a nice way, it's quite a nice tool of just of, of sort of maybe bringing something that was in the background into the foreground of a previous slide or the other way around, maybe something that was in the foreground, rotating it around and putting it sort of to the background. So I would assume that that was the last bit of text. And so let's have a look back. Let's go back to um, my slides here uh, that we did on our solar system and go back to it. Here's one I made earlier and then something that I will demo for you. So here we go back to our beautiful um, shapes and drawings there. And so here we've got, if I, oh, trying to tap on my computer again. Um, here we've got um, uh, the different planets that I've got, and I might want to, um, I've already done one here, so I just want to quickly show how sort of th these work, all right? So if I press the play button now, if I press the play button, um, you can see here that if I press the tap again, they move around, and so in this case, I wanted to focus on the Earth. And so we transition the text in, coming with some extra good facts about the earth. And then I am 
as I'm going around the slides, it's transitioning and it is um, moving there. And so it goes into the background. So how did we do that? How did we do that? Well, as we explained, so if I go on to my last slide here, what I want to do is I want to add some animation so that um, the earth and the earth is a sphere come in um, sort of uh, as I press tap. So if I tap on the slide, like I said before, and then we press transition. All right. Now, as we said before, we have to add transition, add transition. And you can see all the different options, as we said, and you can see there the magic move is there. So we said it was the same thing to do. So magic move is there on its own, but all the other options are here as well. So I could, do I want to drop it in? Um, and as I say, it's going to model. Um, so that's what would happen if we did a transition of that. Do I want to dissolve? And then it, it goes into things like that. So you choose how you want to transition to the next slide. And I think we're going to do a confetti. Lovely. All right. So I think that works for me. So I'm now going to press done. I'm now going to press done. So if I tap on the slide and you can see there, I've added that transition. Um, so again, if I go onto it and I go to transition, I click on there. Now you can see I can slightly e edit the, um, I can change it or I can edit the settings to it. So I've just gone back on the transitions and, I, and the confetti, the reason it isn't all the other options there is because I've already chosen confetti. If I press change there, then it will go back to how it was and give me all the other different options. And you can see um, the duration, I think, oh, do you know what? That went really quickly. I might want to change it to three seconds. Um, um, I could um, include gravity so it all drops to the bottom or I don't want that. And then you can choose how it's delivered. So you can say start on tap or you could say automatically. I could, if it was automatically, then the slide would stay on for a certain amount of time. Um, but I'm, I'm happy with it being on tap. But you can see there, I've changed the duration of it. So if I press play, it's just going to model it for me. And it, it's there to, um, it therefore takes a bit longer. If I press the gravity, um, I don't know if I've ever pressed gravity before, but it all see, seemingly drops down to the bottom. So that's how we do a transition on that front. Now we talked about magic move, all right? Magic move. So that's how we do a transition there. If I go on to um, Saturn is the jewel of our solar system there, and I want to um, transition that using magic move, I tap on the slide like we did before, press transition, and then we add transition like we said. Um, and then you can see there magic move is along the bottom there. The confetti the, has, has moved forward because it thinks that I like confetti now because that's the one I used before. So it's, it, it sort of picks up the fact that you've already done that to move it to the front. But in this case, we're going to do magic move. So I'm going to tap on it. Um, and I'm going to tap on it again and press done. Now, as we said, it gives you the option. Well, it doesn't give you the option. It tells you you've got to do it. Duplicate the slide. Um, so it, remember, the reason we do this is because now that is the object that is going to cite. So if I highlight this and I just want to make Saturn appear really big on the on the next slide. Um, do you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna bring that little rocket. I'm gonna make him smaller because I don't need him for this. I'm gonna bring him down here because we don't need him for this. And then if I add um if I want to add anything um then we can just use the add setting but do you know what I'm happy with that now um because all I wanted to do is show off my magic move. So if I now press play just to model it and I now tap for the next slide and it's transitioned across. It's transitioned across. So now I've got Saturn nice and big. I'm ready to talk about Saturn and maybe at the bottom I'll be starting to add, add some text in, um, um, ready to go. And as you can see there, I've done the same thing for that. So um, adding magic move is a really nice way. It's a really nice way of, um, of sort of um, focusing your the, the 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 person's eye. Um, just one thing I was going to quickly um, do. If um, if you tap on individual objects, 
then there's also animations on the individual objects. So if I animate that, I can have a build in or a build out um, because you might be able, you might want to um, bring them in all one at a time, like I did for that text on the earth. Um, and so if I add build in, then I have a blur for that. Um, and if I pick others, build in, uh, dissolve, cool. I'm going to do that one, add build in, uh, drift and scale, lovely. And then one more, add build in, uh, just uh, do a blur, why not? Um, and so now if I press play, they will go in in the order that you select them and you can change the settings um, for that. So you can, um, you can make them um, make them come in in the order that you choose. And as I say, here is the text. So let's go back. We have shown off the different animation skills that you can do and shown off the different magic moves. As always with this stuff, the best way to learn is to get in there and do it. Just make, um, make some um, keynote slides, maybe for a lesson, make some keynote slides, uh, get the children to do it and just, just show it off um, and just, just explore. Um, that we're, we're showing you the base things that you can do, but then the best way to, to, uh, to pick it up yourself is to go in and do it yourself. Um, and you'll get it up, pick it up nice and quickly. It's quite straightforward. So Tim, back over to you. Um, right, you can stop the sharing like you did before. Lovely. Yeah. Thanks, Ralph. So hopefully you've got a bit of a flavor of how the animations and transitions and magic move works. Good. Right. So um, once you've made your wonderful presentation, here's there are some tools that you can use to actually present it. So what's quite handy is that if you tap on the view button, you can turn on presenter notes. So these are so you can have notes to remind you what you're saying whilst you're presenting. A lot of people when they make PowerPoint slides, they put everything on the slide, which is might be helpful when you're presenting, but for someone watching, it's a bit boring. But if you put all the information in your presenter, presenter notes, you can then just put keywords or information on the slides and you won't forget what you're saying and it will make it a bit more engaging. Um, yeah, I'm gonna type it in that box down there. If you tap on the more button, there is a rehearse slideshow option to let you preview um, with presenter view when you haven't got a second display plugged into your iPad. So you can you can practice going through your slides, going through what you're going to say without actually having to unplug it into another. It's quite it's quite good that it's it's quite an, a fairly new thing, and it's it's a really really useful thing if you want to practice practice going through it. Um, it does it 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 does it really really well. Um, and then you can tap to play your slideshow just there, and it will fill the screen. Um, when the slideshow is going, if you pinch in to stop the slideshow, but if you tap and hold. It will then show you some drawing tools. So whilst you're talking, like what I'm going to do now, I only can now have buttons so I can draw all over my slides or like point people to certain elements. It's quite um, handy. It's like a little like, extra bonus. I was like, what? Uh, I, I did. I didn't know you could do that. But if you press it again, can you um like like with um the the pen and drawing tools? Is there a change? Can you change any settings if you tap on them twice? No, it's it's very much like just that. A few colors, a laser, but it's just useful to. Um, so it keeps them as long as you're in the slide, so you can jump back and forwards and turn them on and off. But if you exit the slideshow, they get lost. So it's not like a permanent record, but it's just whilst you're teaching, whilst you're going through your slides, you can do that. Um, there's also quite useful, you can turn your keynote into a video. So if you've already made some slides, perhaps in a remote learning setting, this makes a lot of sense, or just if you want students to share their final project with you rather than you having to open it in keynote you can just watch a video of it what it does is it it will make a video based on the animations that you put in there so if you got if it's waiting for a click it will just according to these settings advance in that way so you tap the more button and then you tap export and then you're going to export it as a movie change your settings so what resolution frame rate how fast they automatically advance and you can export. And then that brings up the share sheet. So you can decide whether you're gonna save it to your photos or send it with another app, for example. So I'm just gonna show you those things. Let's go back to my wonderful um, Romans presentation where I've miraculously discovered the average reign of um, five Roman emperors. There we go. <laughs> so <laughs> I was wondering what you were doing. <laughs> 
So you're busy paying attention to your um, slides, Ralph, but I just still have to, oh, look, there we go. So, and this is an example of what a wonderful chart would look like. But um, say I want to practice my slides all about study in antiquity. I tap on, oh, I know I need to add my notes, don't I? So I tap here for the view button. I can share my presenter notes. I could type hello and welcome to my presentation, blah, 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 okay, et cetera. So you put all your notes in there. Lovely, I can then get rid of that. So if I want to rehearse it, I tap on the more button and I can tap rehearse slideshow and it shows me what's going on. So I can tap on this button here and I can think, well, actually I want current and next so I know what's happening or I want um, current and notes that could be useful. So if you're talking through, so I can then practice the Romans, a study in antiquity, here we go, Roman emperor's average reign, etc. And then if I, put in all my lovely magic moves and animations, you could then see what that looks like. And then you have your play button as we already demonstrated to actually play your slides. Now, if you want to export that as a movie, you tap on the three buttons, you're gonna export it, and then you've got movie, here we go. And I'm just gonna tap export, and then it will just go crunch, 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 build a movie. And then I can save that to photos. This is, oh, I'm just, Press the wrong button. Okay, save video and it's saved. Let's check. Go to my photos app. Look at that. I've got my little video here. I mean, I haven't got any animation, so it's not very exciting to watch, but you can see, you get an idea of what that might look like. Is there, um, is there a way of, of having some music behind that movie? Oh uh, yeah, you'd have to, in, in Keynote itself, you can either add an audio file to the slides. I think that is the way or you can choose soundtrack nice. and you can choose some audio either from your library as in literally your iTunes library. Not iTunes, they don't call it Apple Music. That's the newfangled <laughs> phrase, isn't it? Good, okay, so that's basically Keynote. And what we need to do now is we need to earn that Apple Teacher badge. I'm aware that we have, we're getting through our time here. So. Um, let's do that. I've been also busy logging into the Apple Teacher Learning Center. So once you're logged into appleteacher.apple.com, you're going to tap on foundational skills. And uh, we're going to go for um, earn badges for iPad. And you can see here that we've nearly all completed it, apart from Keynote. So close, people. So Keynote for iPad. Now you can see you can learn about all these things that we've been learning about. They look so, familiar. They look familiar. It's as if I've just taken the my slides direct from this website or other but it means we're covering all the content people then we're going to earn your badge so first question you are designing a slide depicting the diversity of species of the great barrier reef and want to change arrange this information into rows and columns which button can you use to add a table ralph what do you think well i said um quite a lot uh, while i was talking if ever we need to add anything then the plus button is always our friend so Whenever we Hang need on. to add anything, we always go straight to that plus button and we choose from inside there what we need to add. So I've submitted that and it's saying correct. That was very unenthusiastic. Normally it's a slightly more enthusiastic, but good. Next question, good. Okay, so this we're now gonna open up to the chat. So if you feel like you want to um, suggest the answer, you're creating a presentation containing various images of various animal species and want to edit one of the images using the masking feature. What does masking do? Does it reduce the opacity of the image, crop the image to hide unwanted portions, flip the image vertically or add a frame around the image? So this is now open to the chat. Anyone feel like they want to suggest what the answer to that question is? A tough one actually because we didn't mention the word masking during our presentation. Mm. Daniela thinks crops. I'm going to go with first answer. Fast, first is fastest finger first. It's not. I'm trying to click my. This is confusing me. I'm sharing my iPad screen and clicking with my mouse. Oh, I did that just now. <laughs> Good, nicely done. Well done. Okay. Fantastic. You can also use instant alpha, which is a handy feature for removing the background. Mm, that is, I, I like that. That's good. You'd like to create a chart that demonstrates Roman emperors, distributes and averages <laughs> a lesson on probability. Which of the following are possible chart types? This is a tricky question. All right, sorry, you... I was too busy laughing at you. What was the question? So which of these are possible chart types? 
cube, column, reference line, scale, stacked bar. This feels like a complicated question. This so, might be a good. This might be a good one to go back into the app and uh, let's do that and check. Let's go into the app and check. So when you're in your um your wonderful presentation. Here's my chart. If I tap on the format button, I can change this. No, sorry, chart. I can change chart type. So we have column, stacked column, bar, stacked bar, line, area, etc. Let's just do a bit of multitasking here. So cube. Do we feel like that's one? I don't think so. Column. Reference line. That is something on a chart, but it's not a type of chart. Scale. I think that's to do with something else and stacked bar. I think it's just those two. Should we go for that? I saw stacked bar there. Mm, I definitely think I saw, did I, we see stacked bar? Oh. Yeah, well, there's a stacked column, stacked bar. Yep, definitely. Oh, you you, uh, you yeah, go for that. So I think we've got three, right? yes, nine. well done. Three out of five. I only need one more. Good, so this one's a bit more tricky is we've got to do ordering. But um, I think it'd be good if you perhaps want to post in the, in the comments what you think the answer is. You want to illustrate migration patterns using a presentation using the magic move transition. How do you add to the magic move transition? Identify the correct order of the following steps. So if perhaps in the chat, you just put the number, the order that they go. So one, move or reside the object on the duplicated slide. Two, tap duplicate on the prompts to duplicate the slide. Three, select a slide containing objects to animate, then tap it and choose transition from the menu. Four, close the transition effect list. Five, tap add transition, then select magic move. This is probably a bit tricky, but happy anyone in the chat feels they want to- Put in the numbers. The numbers, this might be quite complicated. Yeah. I think maybe we just need to figure this one out. I think we we'll start. I think we're going to tap add transition, select magic move. Then we do, are. Do you not think number four currently would go before that? Yeah, I think you're correct. Da, da, da. Then we want to close the transition effect list, and then it asks about duplicating. Then you move or resize. Let's go for that. Holding our breath. Mm. Nicely done. Okay, good. So the last one, we can get this wrong. It doesn't matter. The free hit. One slide in your presentation includes a bulleted list outlining the parts of a flower. How do you animate the bullets so that they appear one at a time? Identify the correct order of the following steps. I think we could open this one up for the chat. So which one do we think comes first? So choose the effects list and tap the name of the effect you just want added. Tap build in and choose a build effect. Tap delivery. Tap the bulleted list, then tap animate. Hmm. What do we think? Give me one twenty seconds. Dun, 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 dun. Anyone's got any thoughts? I mean, maybe very quickly, just just quickly. Uh... Or if anyone want to come off mute and just tell us. Show it perhaps. Oh, someone go for it, Daniela. Four, th four, two, three, one. Let's try it. Daniela is on four. Four, two, three, one. Mm. That, that, that was what, that was four, two, three, one originally. Okay. Tap the bullet. You look doubtful, Mr. Lings. Tap build in, choose a build effect. Okay, let's try. Let's give it a whirl. Didn't, not quite. Oh, oh well. Let's review our answer and see if it if it helps. Just explain it. Mm. So I think you tap on it, tap animate, and you tap build in and choose the build effect. You have to. I think at number four has to go number three. You have to close the effects list first of all, then tap on it again, and then tap delivery. No. Tricky, tricky. Good. Okay. Good. So that means. They're going to submit it. This means feel like we're five. firework effect. Submitting our choices. Please wait. Congratulations. You've earned your Apple teacher badge. Whoop. So this random Apple ID I've dug out from somewhere is now an Apple teacher. 
you you've um, you've been at home for too long, Mr. Lings. Right. Okay. Um, wonderful. So, any questions? Please do pop them in the yeah, chat. Yeah. Um, so and anything, anything that you think we haven't explained clearly enough, or you'd like a bit of extra, like so a quick model on or a demo on? You think? Oh, hang on, I didn't quite get that. Um, just put in the questions and just uh, in the chat box, and uh, we can try and explain it. Or anything that you found helpful today. It's always good to reflect on that as we um, wrap up. But, Definitely, um, uh, as there's always one thing. As I say, I, I knew you could um, um, do it, but it remind it reminded me of the um, the the being able to to um, sort of draw put that laser on the slides during the presentation um, was a good reminder tool that I could sort of forgot that you could do um, by tapping on it while you were presenting. Um, that definitely was something that I'll take away and I'll try and use in my, when I'm using it. It's good to, to be able to just draw all over things. Oh. Wonderful, okay. So that's it. And join our mailing list for updates on courses in 2021. Um, we're still designing our programme for next year, might be a little bit different than this year, but um, thank you very much. You should hopefully maybe receive an email from me with just um, a link to the video, so we will pop this onto the YouTube. Um, but thank you very much everyone for tuning in for our um, little comedy duo here sharing keynotes. And <laughs> Um, hopefully, yeah. hopefully people found it useful and uh, they've, they've taken away, even if it's just taken away one or two things that will help them in the future or help them teach it or help them use it or help them with help their children get on board with it. And that's brilliant. Brilliant. Well, appreciate all of your uh, your time and attention and we hope to see you on a future course. So thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you, guys. Bye.